All right, so next video. Uh, basically, we're gonna tear this whole thing apart now. So both the sides will come off, deck will come out, side plate will come out, and the rear roller should drop out. So in order to achieve that, basically, I just have to unbolt every nut and bolt on each side of the mower. Um, there's three on each side holding the rear roller in place, there's two holding the sole plate, and there's two holding the deck in place. Uh, once we've got that apart, sides will come off, cradle will come out, everything will fall out. Excellent. And it makes it easier to remove our clutch fork up the top here. Basically there's a couple of nuts underneath. Um, I find it easier once the deck's off, you can you can hold the nut easier and uh, there's really not too much to it. So once we've got that apart, we'll, we'll uh, probably disassemble the rear roller. Have a look what's going in there. Uh, I don't know if you remember from a couple of videos back, uh, the rear roller isn't level, um, or it doesn't look level anyway. Uh, so I dare say there's a bit of wear in the rear roller somewhere. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so I've loosened uh, and removed all the nuts and bolts from the side. So now the whole side of the mower's free, comes off. Uh, basically, once that's off, everything else uh, will fall apart. So the front roller, uh, front roller cradle is no longer held in place. Uh, that comes out. The sole plate is no longer held in place and that will come out so our bed knots on the bottom 99% um, of the time I will leave that bed knife on there um, and just have the uh, reel grinders or whoever sharpens your reel professionally will be able to remove that themselves uh, I do like to so on a, on a rebuild I like to remove that um, myself uh, and then paint the sole, sole plate um, and then take that to the real grinders and get them to install a brand new so, uh, bed knife on it. Uh, basically why I do that is just to put paint underneath the bed knife so uh, if you take it to the grinders obviously they're not, not going to go next level and paint your machine for you uh, unless you get them to obviously. Uh, but I will generally do that myself. So, upcoming video, I'll show you how to get these nuts, um, bolts, bolts rather, get these bolts out. So, it can be quite difficult sometimes. Uh, persistence is key there. So, pop that aside. We've got our, um, we've got our bed, should just be sitting here. So, the other side of the mail comes off. So the top deck's off, uh, our clutch fork is still assembled, um, as I was talking about earlier there is three nuts underneath here, uh, so to access them I find it a bit easier once you've actually removed that from the mower. Um, pop him aside and our rear roller, so 
rear rail is still assembled. We will disassemble that. We will remove the uh, bearings off the end and pull the complete railer apart. Uh, I can actually already hear just by moving it on my bench that there's a considerable amount of stuff inside the roller. Uh, that is not uncommon, that is very, very common. Uh, basically, it's just dry grass and everything. If you make your grass wet, it gets stuck in there, etc. Uh, etc. Et so, uh, let's remove the clutch fork from the deck. We'll also remove the badge. Now, that badge is in extremely good condition, uh, the paint wise. Um, so, I'm going to try and retain that paint. Uh, the original paint that's on there and uh, do a light sandpaper and bring some shine back to the brass badge so we'll do that next okay so quickly remove this uh, I'm going to re remove the clutch lever uh, the ball on the end here just screws on so we could loosen that and remove that we could do that right now now pop that aside uh, the clutch lever itself, there is a split pin at the end here, so we'll just straighten that out, pull that out. Split pin's out, washes off, and we should be able to remove the clutch engagement lever. So I pop that aside, um, there's nothing wrong with that, I'll also reuse that one. So. Now we've done that, uh, I'd like to remove the, the clutch fork itself. So this clutch fork is broken, it is completely damaged. Uh, one side is completely not even there. Um, so you can buy a replacement clutch fork. Uh, in my case, I will need to do that. So I'll remove that. There is a, uh, a shaft going through the bottom. Uh, basically all we have to do is remove the spring washers on the end. Uh, pull the shaft out and that will slip out. Okay, we've got the shaft off. Uh, now we've got the shaft out. The spring and the clutch fork will come out. So if that's in good condition, keep that. Uh, you can clean that up quite easily with a, a wire wheel or something you can paint that uh, or powder coat, whichever you decide. The spring, um, this one's not too bad, still functions as a spring, however it is quite rusty. Um, for the sake of a dollar, uh, I'll buy a new spring. So. so the clutch assembly, clutch fork assembly, uh, on the on the bottom of that on a solid deck, so on a twin rail you won't actually have this at all, uh, this is only because it's a solid deck, uh, there's three nuts and bolts underneath here, so it's just a matter of undoing them, when you undo that uh, you'll see that there's actually a space of bracket underneath, so retain the space of bracket, it's quite crucial to get your correct height, um, but otherwise it's quite easy. Okay, so clutch fork bracket is removed. Uh, this is the space bracket I was talking about. Uh, do not lose that. It is crucial to retain that height. If you were to put your mower together without having that, your clutch fork bracket will be too low uh, and it actually will miss your uh, thrust pad. So uh, do retain that. And Here's the deck, so the only other thing I need to do is remove the badge. Uh, that's pop riveted on there, so a small drill bit. Drill the pop rivets out, and that should come off easily. Okay, so brass badge um, is removed. Again, I don't believe you can buy a replacement badge. I know you can buy stickers, uh, but as for the actual brass badge itself, uh, I don't believe so. Uh, though I'm sure if you were to 
uh, endeavour yourself, you'd actually probably find someone that would be able to make that. Um, it is it's just a, a motor nameplate, basically, uh, and they still make them today. So I'm sure it's possible to be remade.